Hello and welcome to another episode of Wheels Boy Lockdown Chat, the show where we spend our time locked down talking about topics related to the Chinese car market rather than just letting our hair grow because we have nothing else to do. My guests for the to, for today's video rather are twofold. The first is Mr. Mark Andrews. Welcome, Mark. Good to be back. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for coming. And the second is Mr. Elliot Richards of the Fully Charged channel here on YouTube and his own channel, China Driver. Welcome, Elliot. Hello, hello. Hello. So for today's topic, we're going to talk about a company that a lot of people want us to discuss, and that is BYD. BYD has had a lot of news uh, in recent times. Specifically, we're going to start by talking about sales because it was a good one. 2021 was a good year uh, for BYD. The headline number, we're going to focus on their NEV sales. Uh, NEV here in China is a new energy vehicle that includes not just um, fully electric vehicles, but also plug-in hybrids as well. So you can think of it as plug-in vehicles only. So they're, the chart-topping number here, the headline number was 593,745 new energy vehicles sold, making them the best-selling new energy vehicle company here in China. December alone, they sold almost 100,000 uh, of these cars. So doing and looking very good for BYD. For a little bit of context, um, that represents the year-over-year uh, -year growth, represents a 231% year-over-year increase. Wow. <laughs> All I have to say to that. Um, so... Uh, we're going to get in a minute into the um, product strategy for BYD for 2022. But do you guys have any comments just on, um, you know, BYD sales numbers and, you know, that kind of thing? Yeah, I do. Um, so when we actually got to December, the ICE part of their business, the traditional cars, actually only made up 5% of their sales. So they'd gone from actually being the majority to pretty much nothing. And as of March this year, they've stopped producing anything other than plug-in hybrids or EV cars. So in March, they produced no ICE cars and sold none. Um, also, um, yeah, so, um, and also they've had a huge increase in the number of um, sales of plug-in hybrids. So I think they were up something like 400% last year. Yes, yes. I remember seeing a number like that. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's 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 obviously interesting to see that they're one of these companies that's that's in the forefront, I guess, of a, a, a abandoning fully internal combustion vehicles. Uh, I mean, I'm not surprised with numbers like this. It's, it's, it's easy to understand why. For a little bit of context, so in our last video, Mia Culpa, in our last video, Mark and I made the mistake of saying that BYD was the best-selling electric vehicle company in the world. That is not true. Uh, BYD, I think their EV only models probably sold somewhere around, we'll say half of that 593,000 number. Uh, Tesla, on the other hand, in globally sold $936,000. But that brings us to something that I would really like to talk about, which is that that's Tesla's global sales. Tesla is in North America, Europe, China, uh, and, and a variety of other markets. I don't want to leave anybody bitty out, but the point is they're a very global company. BYD, on the other hand, a vast majority of their sales come from here in China alone. They're only just beginning to expand outside of China. In Australia, they're having the Atto 3 uh, electric SUV, as well as the hopefully soon, coming soon Atto 4 compact electric sedan. Um, but it, it seems like that number is going to have to, is probably going to go up if they can get into other markets. Depending on how well they received overseas, because they've obviously gone to Norway, they're going to Australia. You know, well, and it's not just BYD, but what's the appetite for these cars from those consumers overseas? You know, I remember, well, not personally, but, you know, when Japanese and Korean cars came out overseas, people were very wary of them at the beginning. I don't know if that's changed now. Um, so the, the eyes are on the, the, like the BYDs, the Neos, the x pens over the next kind of 18 months to see how well they do in Europe. It's going to be a very interesting time. If they can nail it, they'll have millions of sales. If not, stick to China. Although having said that, we've got quite good growth with MG in the UK and Europe. Mm. So there is some sort of precedent that they can yes, actually right. grow. And in fact, MG is 
certainly in the UK for a number of years, been the fastest growing brand, uh, brand although obviously that's from a low base. Mm. And yeah, it's they, also a British brand, right? I mean, we all know it's yeah. made by SAIC, but it had at least a, a level of brand recognition that BYD can't really count on. The only thing people know them for sure. in a lot of countries is maybe a bus, you know? Yes. Um, which is not a great association, frankly. Um, but Elliot, you're obviously... 100% agree. You make a great point. It's not as simple as just making your car available and then sitting back and waiting for the sales to roll in. Um, and I do think this next 18 months is going to be very titillating when it comes to how these uh, EV brands do uh, as they expand outward. But, you know, it's just an interesting thing, I think, to keep in mind that we're talking about all these sales from 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 just one market. So uh, time will tell. But something that I want to get to here, and I think is honestly, in my opinion, the maybe the more interesting thing is we have uh, through our incredible research skills um, and ability to translate Chinese, um, have been able to come across what is allegedly a pretty solid um, basically outlook as to what models BYD is going to be uh, introducing for 2022. And so we start with one that we just put a video out of, the BYD Seal. We won't spend a great deal of time talking about this car. Uh, allegedly marketed at least and thought of as a Tesla Model 3 competitor. We had some thoughts about that as to whether that was actually true. Uh, please be sure to check out that video Um to see what we had to say about it. So I'll go on to the next one, which is one we haven't talked about. And that is the BYD Seagull. Now, I should mention the video, the picture you're seeing now is the Leap T03. Now, obviously that is not the BYD Seagull because we do not have any pictures of the Seagull yet um, because we don't have any idea what it's going to look like. But it is going to be competing in the 60 to 80,000 RMB price category. That's around, we'll say, uh, 12 to 15 or 16,000 US dollars. Actually, not quite, actually. Maybe 12 to 14,000 US dollars. Um, well known competitors in that category include the Wuling Mini EV of great fame, as well as the Neta V and the pictured Leap T03. Then that's supposed to be coming out second quarter of 2022, but that's extremely rough what do you guys think about that what do you think about um it'll be a school cut it'll be a but in cha but in cha the seagull all right um hey, elliot i this we're right now discussing overall the wit there's there's we're going to get into once we finish talking about these different lines the absolute mm -hmm. i won't use the the word i want to use the the mess that is the DYD product line right now, but you 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 have some thoughts about these 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 ocean themed names. We've got the dolphin, we've got the seal, we've got now the seagull. In a moment, we'll talk about the sea lion. You're not a fan, I understand. <laughs> not at all. I mean, luckily it seems that they're only using them for China because they've taken the um, the one to Australia and they've renamed it, which is good. But I mean, who wants to drive around and say to their mates, "Oh, what do you drive? Oh, I drive a Tesla, a Model 3. Oh, I drive a Seagull. Doesn't quite have the same ring to it. And and what is the naming convention? Why Seagull? Seagull is quite a big. It's quite a big bird, but they're using it on their smallest car. You know, there's there's the seal, which is kind of a a flabby creature, which kind of rolls about in the ocean. And and we could go into the other cars, like the I think we could talk about it later, like the Destroyer. Great name for a sports car. Yes. Not for a humdrum sedan. I just don't understand it and then you've got like you said like the hat the hand the tang the song which i think are great names i just don't know what's going on well it's well, very confusing mark also the, the depth of the range i mean they're all sort of half competing with each other so um what is it the destroyer which is i think it's the destroyer zero five is on, basically a chin i'm gonna cut you guys off i want to i want to go through everything and then want to come back because i also have strong thoughts about what the <laughs> heck they are doing right now with the product strategy and the amount of incredible amount of overlap. But let's let's get through these these potential debuts here and, and, and then we'll move on. So the, the third one, I've got a picture of a Model Y because the third member of the Ocean Lion that's supposed to be coming out is called the BYD Sea Lion as opposed to the Seal. Um, the, the difference being, I'm sure, uh, important. Meaningful and important. Um, but that car is supposed to be a B-segment SUV priced between 200000 and 250000 RMB here in China. That's um, 
it's cheaper than a Model Three or Model Y rather, which is a, starts around two hundred and seventy thousand, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, goes up into the, the three fifty thousand range. And for context, two hundred thousand is about um, thirty thousand. Uh, two hundred and fifty thousand is thirty thousand U.S. dollars, up to about thirty five or almost forty thousand U.S. dollars, um, topping out according to this. Um, yeah, and so that car. Now here's some interesting info, and this is could be completely unfounded, but I find it interesting. This car could potentially use Huawei's LiDAR system. Well, well. Which would be... <laughs> There's a lack of, a lack of excitement there yes, in the response. I, I know. I was expecting a very right. a strong round of applause, and I didn't get it, you guys. I'm, I'm devastated. Um, <laughs> but, I, you know, at this point... Do, do we want to do that bit again? Hold on. Let me try it again. <laughs> LiDAR. No. Um, so, yeah, right? I expect you to fall off camera. So... This is obviously like we've got the an increasing number, the um, Lee Xiong or Lee, sorry, L9, the Xpeng G9, the Xpeng P5, the next generation of the P7. An increasing number of Chinese cars are having LiDAR. None of them that I'm aware are, are they're equipped, but none of them actually are y y using it. I think the P5 might be. Yeah, using that's it. the bit that would really get me excited when yeah. you actually start using them. Yeah, I don't. Exactly. I know the P5's latest. I don't know that it actually has. Is the, that it's the latest parking, autonomous parking feature that they've gone live in March for their owners. Um, I don't know if it's actually using the LiDAR or not, so I won't say There's some way. speculation about that. Some yeah. people say it does, some people say it doesn't. Well, the point being that this is, this is you know, potentially um, another feature, but it would be a big, I do honestly think it would be a big, big, big deal for BYD because BYD, as far as autonomous driving, they don't have a lot to, a leg to stand on, really. It's not a, a sales feature right. for them, right? Right. Currently, yeah, currently not. At the right. Moment, right. So that could be their foray into that, and that car allegedly could have a range of over seven hundred kilometers. Uh, I bet my bottom dollar that it's NEDC though. So don't get too excited. Oh. Well, now oh. probably CLTC. Oh, sorry, um, CLTC. Does, uh, so really quickly, uh, does anybody know if the CLTC range is any more reliable than NEDC? No, it's, it's even worse. It's even oh, is it? I thought it was in between. No, no, no. It's it's actually even more generous than NEDC. Oh, fantastic. Oh. That's not <laughs> at all a Chinese government thing to do. Anyways, um, so moving on to the, the, the that's we're moving on from the um the ocean line, as I'm calling it, these ocean themed names, uh, onto their Ocean Liners. Ocean I know it's too close to Ocean Liner. I I, I try to the C, the C the C series. The C series. Spelled S E A. Um, so again, yeah, Elliot has the proper reaction to that one. Um, so <laughs> next up, we're going to talk about some of the, so DMI is BYD's term for their plug-in hybrid cars. And so we're going to talk about their DMI. Dual motor. Dual, dual motor. Thank you. Dual motor. God knows is probably intelligent. Um, dual motor intelligent, no doubt. Um, so these are the sedans and this is the new naming convention that they debuted at, I believe, the Guangzhou Auto Show. We saw the mm -hmm. BYD Destroyer 05, which a name that can only be... Elliot has covered his face and has then blurred himself, which is very funny. <laughs> um, but then again, Elliot, I, Elliot's reaction is the proper one. The Destroyer 05, which is a replacement for the BYD Qin, which is their... Well, the Qin plug-in hybrid. The Qin yeah. plug-in hybrid specifically, uh, which is their, which is their ex incredibly well selling or selling very well um kind of lower like cheaper compact sedan um very popular as a ride sharing car these days you know your child's uh, equivalent of uber that's what it is and that's what i see okay. most most of these cars is they're going to be fleet sales or you know for for dd or whatever mm -hmm. so that's why they're just not so exciting and calling it destroyer I, I love that they're doing crazy names and something interesting but don't call it destroyer so for this plane sedan. So for context, self, this is self a, destroyer. Self destroyer. Self -destroyer. <laughs> um, the this is the warship series. We're going to get into the SUVs, the MPVs. Ah. They all have warship, military warship related names. So this is a destroyer. The zero zero five is again basically a equivalent of a, a BYD Chin. Um, Chin Pro, we should say. Chin Pro. Chin Pro. Chin Pro yeah. or Chin Plus DMI, I think is what I was that I was reading. But regardless, right. I'm lost. Point being, yeah, I know, right? Pro well, the digital chin they just kept selling, and then they have the chin pro, which was the right. sort of newer version. Right. Uh, and viewer, if you are confused, we are confused as well, and it is a <laughs> job to not be confused. So this is an indication of why BYD needs to clean up their clean up their house. But um, that car um, 
is going to be followed. That's supposed to be that's just this this thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop saying the name the release dates that are being claimed on this thing because they're completely ridiculous. Because it's saying first quarter. Oh no, sorry, that one was first quarter of 2022. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting ahead of myself because I was talking about the the Destroyer Zero Seven, which is essentially a replacement. Um, and I'm sorry. Let me let me continue our slideshow forward i'm being a terrible producer this by the way for our viewers i'll leave this up for a moment for them to get some context that's the destroyer zero five uh for your reference so the other card there's going to be the destroyer zero seven um which is a b segment uh, sedan uh similar to the byd it's basically the plug-in byd han replacement so the BYT Han has its DMI plug-in hybrid version, and this will be the replacement for that. Allegedly fourth quarter. And they just brought out two new versions of the DMI version of the Han. What's the point of that? I don't know. It's almost as if it's like it's like they've got. So I love every video. I try to make a watch reference. Back in the nineteen back in the nineteen sixties, Seiko decided they wanted to make a high end line of watches. So they made Grand Seiko and King Seiko, and they had them compete with each other. It's almost as if BYD has departments inside their inside of themselves that are competing against each other to create right. like. Cars. And it's almost as if Ethan is sponsored by Seiko as well. Ladies and gentlemen, mm. just want to shout out: I am not actually wearing a Seiko <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, but but go earnestly eyes to the camera seiko i'm open to whatever you want. <laughs> i am here I think for it shameless uh, plug absolutely shameless shameless plug. Shame. i've got another shameless plug coming up um, but, um uh, i think that's the feeling with me with both byd is that they they've got it's either designed by committee or branded by committee or the product line is by committee because there's no strategy or, or sense to it there's no one person saying right this is the product line. This is what we're going to do. It's, this person says this. This person says this. They've got to please both bosses so they'd make two different cars. And they end up with random names, crazy designs. And I mean, I love BYD, but they need to chill out a little bit. <laughs> I think I even read they're going to put them into different sales um, channels as well, uh, which makes it even more crazy. Like Pure EV separate from Pure EV. And I'm not sure. Sure. I mean, that would make slightly more sense. Well, you know, look, it's not, there's there's so many. Go games. to the zoo to buy an animal. Go to the dockyard to buy a warship. But what's the <laughs> other one? <laughs> that was good. All right. I'll give you that one. Um, well, it's, you know, why, is, why does Zika exist? Why uh, didn't they just. Because we're still, we're still trying to seek it. No, uh, uh, no, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give you a laugh on that one. Um, Marks on fire. Why is it not sold as just a Lincoln Co? But, um, oh, well. You know, it's marketing's hard, guys. Marketing's hard. Not everyone gets it right. Um, but let's move on really quickly to finish off our warship line. We have the these are the plug-in hybrid DMI SUVs, which are the, from now on be known as the Cruiser 05. Now, Mark, you were telling me you've seen it translated as the Corvette. Corvette, yeah, I believe um, I saw it. Which I think in, it's in, in terms of the um military warships probably actually maybe more accurate in terms of the translation either way we'll see cruiser or corvette cruiser 05 replacement for the song dm or equivalent at least to the song dm which is a very popular vehicle here in china kind of a um mid-size suv and then of course there's the cruiser 07 uh i don't understand what 0507 why isn't it 0305 who knows um your guess is as good as mine that car is a number of seats number <laughs> Should we do answers on a post? <laughs> answers in the comments. Answers, yeah. Give us your give us your answers in the comments. Uh, tell me how stupid I am. Um, but the Cruiser Zero Seven is the uh, large SUV. So BYD Tongue, basically the BYD Tongue replacement, if you will. Um, and that car is um, supposedly, you know, fourth quarter twenty twenty two. Who knows? I certainly don't. Um, and then finally. The what I think is the piece de resistance of the warship line, the MPV, known as the landing ship 07. Landing ship 07. Now, again, I want to, I, I, before anybody, before we jump in, because this is where I think we should give our thoughts about what it is that they're trying to accomplish with these. These names are not official translations, they are the they are translations of the Chinese names, though. So there's not a lot of ways to translate. Maybe if you're a Chinese native speaker, you can tell me in the comments. How would you translate? I believe it's Dong Lu Dong Lu Jian. Dong Lu Jian. That translates to me as landing ship in every dictionary I could find. So 
Uh, if somebody has another idea, please let us know in the comments. But guys, again, I think we've touched on this, but let's kind of give our final thoughts here. We've got sea animals. We've got warships. We've got still got, and I, I didn't even mention this, the Dynasty line technically has some updates coming for the Song Max um, as well, which would be an MPV. The Max will be an MPV. And then the Han DMI, which I think, Mark, you mentioned they've already done two updates for that, uh, which is currently the uh, vehicle that was on screen here. And I'm going to switch. That is the Song DMI that's going to be replaced by the Cruiser 05. And then that is the Tong that's going to be replaced by the Cruiser 07. And then this is the shameless plug I, I, I mentioned before. This is the land landing ship will be competing with the Buick GLA. Be sure to go to... Wheels Boy, you're already here on the Wheels Boy channel, actually. Go check out our review of the Buick GLA, a very interesting car, only available here in China. Um, but guys, I'm going to go back to our main screen here, just so we can give some closing thoughts. What the heck is going on? Uh, I think, for me, BYD are still trying to find their feet. Um, I mean, the names, at the end of the day, doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter what I think, because they're one of the best-selling cars in China. So they're obviously doing something right. And what appeals to me maybe is different to the Chinese consumer. I just wish they had a bit more of a kind of clear direction. I mean, they're doing great things, but I just wish they had a bit of a clearer direction. But yeah, what do I know? It's quite typical of a Chinese producer. They just try to cover all bases with every, well, trying to cover all bases with just multitudes of models different ranges, which often cannibalize sales from each other. But one thing that's actually quite interesting is how many sales BYD is targeting for this year. They're talking about 1.5 to 2 million sales, although how much that's going to be affected by the pandemic is anybody's guess. But so far, they have not actually had any stoppages or very limited stoppages in production anyway. Um, although I think the Xi'an factory did have mm -hmm. some issues, but mm -hmm. um, so far they haven't been affected by the um, Shanghai situation. Yeah, so uh, I, I was seeing the same numbers, Mark. I thought it was one point one to one point five, but you know, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, I've seen one point five to two. Wow. I mean, I you know, I believe it. And if they could do that in just the Chinese market, that would be obviously pretty yeah. impressive. I. I, for one, I think Elliot's right. I, I, I agree that they have some interesting names. I like the fact that they have kind of fun names. I don't like boring. I don't want another Camry. I don't want another Avalon. <laughs> you know, no offense to, I'm, I'm kicking on Toyota here, but everybody does it. Um, <laughs> and I, I love the interesting stuff. It's just, they kind of have to hone in on, on something. And I, I personally, I think mark your point. I think if they did separate the lines between a warship line and because I wish they'd just keep the dynasties because it's such a great yeah. like, leaning yeah. into the Chinese heritage, yeah. the history, yeah. their cool names, the Han, the mm. Song, and all these different things. They're, they're great. Yeah. But if they're truly going to abandon that, then they really probably do need to have separate sales channels and, and, and say, this is our warships, which are, as Elliot pointed out, fleet vehicles mostly. Um, and then these are our more fun, more m funky, fully electric sea animals. Um, and I will put my vote in for in favor of funky sea animal names. I uh, maybe maybe the Wheels Boy team will have a official our official car might be the B, maybe a BYD Dolphin. Who knows? Um, just for just for the clout, just for the clicks. Um, all right, guys. Well, I think that's going to do it for this. Uh, honestly, do we not get to talk about the hand wagon? Ah, yes, yes. So I apologize. This is the sexiest news about BYD, and we've just about forgotten it. <laughs> I, I, we did, we did. I'm sorry. And so, actually, what I'm going to do, um, what I'm going to do is, uh, I actually have some bad news for everyone. So, those of you, this is a reward or a punishment, actually, for those of you that went to the end of this video, especially if you were uh, somebody who follows us on Instagram. Another mea culpa, Mark. That's fake. And by <gasps> fake, I mean even the prototype image that we put up is not going to be, it's not from BYD, it's from a specific automotive media that made both the convertible and the wagon that was that are talked about, and they made that prototype looking one just to, frankly, make me hate them. I You're think it kidding me. I, I, am, I am not, I promise. I, my Chinese oh partner, my God. I'm, I looked like a fool because I was posting about it on Instagram and I texted my Chinese partner about it and he goes, what? I thought that was that media. And I go, what? No. He said, yes. 
So uh, I'm here to... I, I originally thought the, the pictures we saw, we were actually sitting in the B right UN Plus when we were talking about this. I, really... and I thought maybe that was a rendering. And then I saw the video. I was like, oh my God, it lives. Sign me up. I'll, I'll... And you're telling me that is fake. I'm going to I'm going to have uh our editor put in the badly bad quality videos the only video we have of the of the Han wagon so people that don't know what we're talking about can can see what we're talking about here but yes um it's not real it's 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 a one off <sighs> and I I, I I don't know I I'm I'm got to I was truly depressed about that but uh on that well uh sour note uh, I think that we can we can end we can end today's video. Thank you, Mark. Thanks thank for you. that. Yeah, I yeah, no, I always aim to displease. Um, but uh, <laughs> thank you, Mark. Thank you, Elliot, for for joining me for this video. Thank, thank you guys you. for for watching. Be sure to check us out. Uh, all of our all of us on um, social media handles, which are below. Please see Elliot's great videos on fully charged. Mark writes a lot of great automotive reviews. You can find them on his website there, Mark Andrews or sorry, Mark E Andrews dot com. Uh, and also E A. Thank you. Um, yep. And then also on Twitter, is Elliot also on Twitter there? Um, please be sure to comment below with topics you would like us to talk about. We will be back soon. Thank you for watching.